Okay, today, this time in this video, I want to talk about something I, I noticed on the web the other day. I was fooling around looking at a couple of blogs, and I came across a discussion of a new study about fish oil. Uh, fish oil is uh, one of the more popular bodybuilding supplements. I frequently suggested uh, using a fish oil supplement for bodybuilders because it's, uh, it contains what they call the omega-3 fatty acids, specifically DHA and EPA, that are essential in human nutrition. And uh, if you don't eat at least two to three fatty fish meals a week, th there's a very, very good chance that you're going to be lacking these uh, essential fatty acids. Uh, you know, the, the actual requirement uh, for omega-3 is listed as what they call alpha-linoleic acid, which is uh, uh, alpha-linoleic alpha acid is the reason that it's listed as the essential omega-3 fatty acid. It's found in a much greater variety of foods than the preformed omega-3 fatty acids, specifically EPA and DHEA. So in other words, alpha-linoleic acid, or ALA, is much easier to obtain in the diet. But the problem with uh, ALA is that the enzymes that convert it into the active form, omega-3 form, which is DHEA and EPA, these enzymes are not very active in the human body. Males can convert uh, about, uh, they can convert ALA into about maybe 3% of EPA and less than 2% of DHEA. So as a consequence, ALA is not really a great source of the preformed omega-3 fatty acids. I'm not saying ALA is bad for you. It has other health attributes, which are beyond the scope of this video. But as a source of the real health benefits associated with omega-3, uh, ALA is not the, the type of supplement to use if you want the real health benefits of omega-3. For that, you're going to have to eat the, uh, or use a source of the preform uh, EPA and DHA forms. And those forms are found in fatty fish sources such as mackerel, salmon, herring, uh, halibut, and there's a couple of others. Basically, fatty fish. Some of the bodybuilders' favorite foods, such as tuna and tilapia, are very poor sources of the omega-3. You cannot count on them as omega-3 sources. I've talked about omega-3, uh, some of the benefits of, of omega-3 uh, uh, fish uh, uh, fatty acids in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. Uh, for example, I just, in one article, I discussed the uh, controversies related to cardiovascular health. EPA and DHA offer a number of cardiovascular benefits. They lower the oxidation of what they call low-density lipoprotein, which means that you have a lower risk of cardiovascular disease. They have a tremendous effect at lowering what they call blood triglycerides, or fat that circulates in the blood. Uh, triglycerides are converted in the liver to LDL, and when LDL becomes oxidized, you have uh, atherosclerosis, uh, which eventually leads to cardiovascular diseases such as heart attacks and strokes. Uh, so uh, it does a number of things, which I discussed in the article. But there was a controversy in this regard because a couple of studies came out in medical journals indicating that uh, fish oil has absolutely no benefits and it does not prevent cardiovascular disease. In my article, I discussed why that's a fallacy. There's a number of reasons I won't go into detail here, but it's available to any subscribers to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. It's in the online archive. Feel free to read it. But one of the reasons uh, why some of those studies, well, I'll, I'll go two basic reasons I'll discuss. Two basic reasons why some of the studies showed that fish oil is not pro protective against cardiovascular disease is, first of all, they, <laughs> it sounds ridiculous to say this, but they gave fish oil supplements to people that were eating f fatty fish several times a week in some of the studies, which is absolutely absurd, almost to the point of retarded. Uh, obviously, if people are already getting enough omega-3 uh, uh, fish oil, I'm sorry, omega-3 fatty acids from food, taking an omega-3 supplement is not going to do anything. That's the first problem. The second problem is other studies, they, they underdosed the omega-3 fatty acids. In other words, they gave fish oil in doses of one gram or less, when in fact, every study shows 
to treat cardiovascular disease takes anywhere from three to five grams minimal of fish oil. Yet the studies that showed no benefits, they gave one gram a day. And I'll, I'll leave the motivations up to you to figure out why this was done. Uh, I'll give you a little hint. Statin drugs, which are given out by doctors to treat heart disease, are among the three best-selling drugs in the world. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not talking about any conspiracy theories here, but I'll leave it to you. Uh, but there's another possible reason why some of these studies, and this relates to my main topic in this video, why some of the early studies uh, about fish oil showed little or no benefits is because some of the uh, fish oil products used in these studies might have been oxidized. Now you have to understand fish oil is a long chain fatty acid. Without getting into fat fatty acid chemistry, let me just briefly say that uh, polyunsaturated fats such as fish oil are highly prone to oxidation, highly prone to oxidation. In other words, uh, they, they can go bad pretty fast. That's why when you buy, for example, a fish oil supplement, you uh, want to, uh, especially a liquid fish oil supplement, you want to, as soon as you open up the bottle, you got to keep it refrigerated. Very, very important because if you leave it out in room temperature, it's going to be oxidized in a flash and it's going to turn rancid. If you keep it in your refrigerator, it can last up to 90 days and not become rancid. But let's get back to this study here. Uh, anyway, I was looking at these blogs and a, and a couple of them highlighted a brand new study that literally just came out days ago. It was in a pretty reputable medical journal. And uh, it was done by Harvard researchers, researchers and which gives a certain amount of, uh, of uh, importance, I guess you can say, to the study. Uh, however, there's a couple of problems with it. But first, let me say what this study showed. The study showed, it looked at three of, of what was described as the leading best-selling brands of fish oil in the United States, the top three selling brands. And they did analysis of these supplements. And they found that these supplements had a number of problems. They were loaded with oxidation byproducts. They had a lot of uh, different types of fats in there besides the polyunsaturated omega-3 fats. They contained saturated fat, among other things. And, and uh, also, they, they, they were just basically rancid, I guess is the only way you could describe it. And worst of all is that because of the possible oxidation, most of these three supplements, they didn't even match the label claims for their content of EPA and DHA. In other words, they had a lot less of the active omega-3 fatty acids than was stated on the label. So now, uh, you know, th this is a problem because when fish oils oxidize, as I said earlier, it doesn't provide a lot of the health benefits. But this study went on to say that there's a real danger with oxidized uh, uh, fats, such as oxidized fish oil fats, because it can possibly cause problems. It can have a reverse effect where it can actually possibly stimulate uh, or, or promote, uh, let's say, cardiovascular disease. That's what this study said, okay? Uh, there's a couple of problems, however, with this study. First of all, they didn't identify the three leading brands, so you don't even know which brands they are, right? That's the first problem. So the second problem is if you look at the small print, even though the, the study was conducted by researchers from Harvard or Massachusetts General Hosp Hospital, and the truth of the matter is that the study was partially funded by a company that sells prescription-based fish oil supplement that costs $300 a month for a 30-day supply. This is about 10 times more than the price of the most expensive commercial fi fish oil product. So if you, if you add it all up, there was an ulterior motive behind this study. In other words, this study basically concluded by saying it was directed at physicians who might want to prescribe uh, fish oil as a preventative uh, uh, substance to for patients who are at risk for heart disease or whatever. The study concluded saying that physicians should be very careful not to prescribe any commercial fish oil since the top three brands that were tested in the study were basically dirty. Uh, so the, the suggestion, uh, the unsaid suggestion, I should say, is that physicians should only use the, uh, the prescription-based fish oil, such as the one, that, uh, the, such as the one that, uh, sold by the company that paid for the study. So obviously, there's, there was a little ulterior motive there. Uh, now, let's look at some other research. You know, I mean, you don't want to uh, consume oxidized fish oil. Uh, another word for oxidized is rancid. Now, when you buy fish oil, if the capsules look bad or if you want to open up and smell them or if you buy a commercial fish oil 
and it's uh, the and it, you, you know you you give it the sniff test. If it smells rancid, it's bad. Don't use it. Now the question that, that arises when I say this is: Is oxidized fish oil really harmful? I'll get to that in a second. But I just want to mention a couple of other studies that looked at this issue that were done in the past. For example, uh, in t uh, there's a uh, online uh, uh, product testing site. They test supplements. It's called ConsumerLab.com. In 2008, they tested 50 of the top-selling commercial fish oil products that are sold in health food stores online everywhere, the 50 top products. The odds are that whoever's looking, viewing this video, you're, the product you use is probably included in this testing procedure. The What they found was that all 50, get this, all 50 of the fish oil products tested, their potency matched the label claim and even better, there was no contaminants, no mercury, no hydroxyperoxides, no, uh, uh, what is it, BPA, all this stuff. It wasn't found in these commercial fish oil. And Consumer Labs tested it very, very thoroughly using the standard accepted test for fish oil. Uh, so what else can I say here about this? Uh, uh, there have been a couple of other studies that tested commercial fish oil that didn't come out good. There was one done in New Zealand where I believe it was 40% of the commercial uh, fish oil supplements sold in New Zealand showed uh, a lot of oxidation. There was another study done uh, of American, uh, of, I'm sorry, of, of fish oil supplements sold in North America also showed about half of them were highly oxidized. Uh, now, I should point out, let, let's talk about the effects of this, uh, of consuming oxidized fish oil. The very worst thing about consuming oxidized fish oil is that you're not going to get the potency. In other words, once the polyunsaturated fats, omega-3 fats, once they become uh, oxidized, they don't really provide, it's almost like they're inert. They don't really provide the same health benefits as unoxidized fish oil. So that's the worst, that's probably the worst thing. Now, it doesn't sound good to, you know, consume uh, oxidized fish oil, but what really happens? Well, this was examined in a 2006 study that was published in the British Journal of Nutrition. It was a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled study, which is the gold standard of scientific studies. It involved 54, 54 healthy subjects with an age range of 18 to 50. They were divided into three groups. One group consumed 8 grams of fresh fish oil that was certified to have no oxidation byproducts. The second group cons uh, uh, consumed 8 grams of highly oxidized, highly oxidized fish oil, even worse than anything you could buy off the shelf. This was purposely made highly oxidized. They also had 8 grams. And the third gram, uh, I'm, seeing, I'm sorry, the third group consumed 8 grams of sunflower oil, which is a omega-6 uh, fish oil. That was kind of a control group. I should also point out right off from the start, 8 grams is a, fat, is a large dose of fish oil. The standard recommended dosages are, uh, if you are just using it for, for preventive health purposes, one to two grams a day of, uh, of omega-3 fatty acids. If you are, are at risk for cardiovascular disease, the American Heart Association recommends two to four grams a day. So eight grams a day is a pretty hefty dose. Now, if, if fish oil, if oxidized fish oil was going to do something bad into in your body, eight grams a, a day definitely would show it. Not only that, but the subjects in this study took these fish oil uh, capsule, or took the fish oil supplements for, for, uh, 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 under two conditions. They took it first for three weeks, and then they did a longer-term uh, intake of seven weeks. So they took the oxidized, some of these people took oxid eight grams of oxidized fish oil for three weeks and seven weeks. So what happened? Here's what happened. No changes in any markers of oxidation, oxidative stress, lipid peroxidation, or inflammation was seen in the subjects who ingested either fresh, fresh or oxidized fish oil supplements for three or seven weeks. In other words, they, in other words, nothing showed up in the blood. There was no oxidation byproducts. They tested the natural antioxidants in the body because if you consume an oxidized product, it's going to basically kind of use up your natural antioxidants that are in your blood and in your tissues, and guess what? They checked the natural antioxidant level of the body, such as vitamin E, glutathione, and other natural antioxidants found in the body. No change, no change at all. The oxidized uh, fish oil did not affect the natural antioxidant content of the body whatsoever. Now, the question arises, 
What happened to the oxidized fish oil? Why didn't it cause all these changes? Why did no oxidized byproducts uh, show up in the bloodstream? Why wasn't there any inflammation which would occur if you uh, consumed oxida oxidative uh, byproducts? The answer is nobody really knows, but, but they do know that when you ingest, you know, the body's not stupid. It's like a computer. The body can sense when you're ingesting oxidized uh, fats, oxidized uh, nutrients, and guess what? There's a barrier in your gastrointestinal system that neutralizes ingested oxidized products before they get into the blood. The, the, the big mystery is what happens to it. Nobody really knows because it's, really it's never really been followed through. What is known is that the oxidized substances or food substances that you ingest never get into your blood. If they did, you'd be in big trouble. They, the, gastrointestinal, uh, the, the gastrointestinal tissues neutralize oxidized products, including oxidized fish oils, before they get in the blood. So they can't do any harm. Strangely enough, though, both groups, both the oxidized fish oil group and the fresh air fish oil group, showed, showed similar levels of EPA and DHA in the blood. So the actual omega-3 fatty acids of both types did get in the blood, but somehow the oxidation byproducts didn't, which is great. <coughs> I should also point out that natural dietary oxidants that you consume in foods or in supplements, such as vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, zinc, and, and others, <coughs> actually also neutralize oxidation products that you ingest. So you also have another barrier uh, against uh, the dangers of ox oxidation getting, uh, you know, getting into your, uh, messing you up. So basically, uh, also I should point out, there's another interesting uh, thing. Two nutrients in, in studies have shown, they've actually uh, done this with fish oil, oxidized fish oil. Two nutrients, the amino acid taurine, which is not an essential amino acid. It's kind of famous for being a, a main ingredient in the Red Bull energy drink. Taurine, I'm going to have a huge article on all the health benefits and, and bodybuilding effects of taurine upcoming in my Applied Metabolics newsletter uh, and, and taurine's effect on muscle. But uh, for the purposes here, uh, animal studies show that if you give taurine to animals that have ingested highly oxidized fish oil, the highly oxidized fish oil is neutralized. It doesn't do anything at all. It does not harm the animals at all as long as you give them taurine with it. There's another nutrient that's strangely enough found naturally in salmon. It's what gives salmon its pink color. It's called astaxanthin. It's available in supplement form. Astaxanthin goes one step further. Astaxanthin actually can take, uh, if you ingest astaxanthin in a dose of anywhere from 4 to up to 12 milligrams, if you ingest it with an oxidized fish oil, it will, it will actually... It actually refresh the fish oil. In other words, it'll make it fresh again. It'll actually neutralize the oxidation byproducts in the fish oil. This is a very little known fact. Still, though, I still advise you, if you do ever purchase a product, a fish oil product, whether capsules or liquid, you know, and you, you, you know, smell it or it looks bad and that kind of thing, don't ingest it. I mean, it's basically, and the main reason for not ingesting is not that it's going to hurt you for the reasons I said earlier, but mainly because it's, it's not going to really provide the health. Uh, the biggest problem with oxidized fish oil is that the omega-3 fatty acids are kind of neutralized as far as health effects provided. They just don't work as well. <coughs> so uh, that, that, I guess, covers this, which, uh, uh, you know, this is another example of what I've said in previous videos which is uh, why you have to be careful of some of these so-called science blogs. I mean, they don't give you the whole story. In an effort to show how smart they are, some of the writers of these blogs only give you the partial story. And you have to kind of read between the lines, like in the blog that I, I based this study on. There was no mention of the fact that the study was sponsored by a, a company that sells prescription-based fish oil. You know, that, that really kind of puts a little stinker on the study there. Uh, also, if you're interested in further information on nutrition, exercise science, hormonal therapy, fat loss research, anti-aging research, uh, all these subjects, uh, I strongly urge you to subscribe to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. It regularly contains this type of information where I tell you the full truth. I don't leave anything out. I will expose fraudulent supplements. I will explore, uh, uh, expose 
exercise methods that don't work. I have preventative health uh, articles in there, how to prevent heart disease, cancer, and so on and so forth. The content of my Applied Metabolics newsletter, which is, by, by the way, more like a monthly ebook. It's 40 to 50 pages every month. Uh, it's uh, non commercial, there's no ads, and it contains information that is kind of off the road. You're not going to find it on blogs, you're not going to find it at internet sites. I do a lot of very in depth research to find this stuff and present it to you. It's all in plain English, there's no heavy science involved, and any, anything that is technical. I explain so anybody with uh, who can read will be able to understand it. Thanks for listening. And if I didn't say so in previous videos, I hope all of you who are viewing this have a great new year. Uh, some of us have had a bad 2016. Let's hope 2017 is better. And if you want the best friend you'll ever have in your life, adopt a shelter dog. They're, 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 they're just the best people. But I almost said people. <laughs> the truth is, I guess I like dogs better than people, I admit it. <laughs> anyway, take care. Mm -hmm.